to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. You see then that a man is justified by works and not by faith only. James chapter 2, verse number 24. We welcome you today to our study of the book of James. Today we're thinking about James chapter 2, which is the premier discussion on faith and works. And what's faith part? How does works fit into that? And how should a Christian feel about the actions God has set forth in his life? And so we're glad that you've joined us for our study of the Word of God today. We want you to have your Bible ready as we're going to look to God's Word as the final authority in everything that we say and do. We're so happy that you've joined us for our broadcast again. We want you to know that today's lesson is being brought to you by members and individual congregations of the Church of Christ. The Church of Christ in your local area would love for you to visit their assembly. If you've got a Bible question, you'd like to know more about the plan of salvation or what the church teaches on various subjects, they'd be happy to sit down and open the Word of God with you and discuss these things from the Scripture. And friend, we also want you to know that here at the Gospel of Christ, we'd love to help you in any way that we can in your study of the Word of God. You can visit our website, thegospelofchrist.com. From that website, we have a wide variety of good Bible study material. We have video lessons, audio lessons, written transcripts, many articles and study materials that are all available to you free of charge. If you'd like to have a copy of our study on the book of James or any book of the Old or New Testament or topic that we've got, you can call us or write to us, or you can go to our website, thegospelofchrist.com. You can uh, order a digital download, or we'll be happy to send you a DVD or CD in the mail. Just check out our free media request, free media request form, and you can access that from there. As we think today about James chapter 2, this is such a premier passage in dealing with faith, and works. We want to begin by thinking about what both of those are as far as biblical definitions. There are two types of works that we might mention in the Bible, and we want you to understand the type that James is talking about here. In the Bible, there are works which we might define as meritorious or works of merit. For example, the Jews would say to Jesus, that, you know, Jesus said to them that uh, he's a king, he's teaching about the kingdom, and of course, they go on to tell one of the biggest fabrications you've ever heard. They say we've never been in bondage to anybody, and Jesus said, you know, he was of Abraham, he was the son of Abraham, and we go on to say, they would say, well, you know, we're children of Abraham, and Jesus would say, God's able to raise up children of Abraham from these stones. Don't say to yourself, we've got Abraham as our father. God can raise up children of Abraham from these stones. They thought because they were the descendants of Abraham, because the, the DNA blood of Abraham somehow ran in their blood, that naturally, of merit, because of who they were, they were going to naturally be God's people all the time. And God said, that's not the way it works. You haven't merited or earned this way. And so they thought the works of merit we're going to get them somewhere. But then there are also works or condition, conditional works, works of obedience that God tells us we must do. Think about this. In Matthew 7, verse 21, Jesus said it's not everybody that looks up into heaven and says, Lord, Lord, that's going there, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Jesus would later say to the pious religious elite, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do the things which I say? Luke 6, 46. And do you remember what Jesus said in John 14, verse 15? If you love me, what? Keep my commandments. There are 
works of obedience or conditional works. These works don't earn us our salvation. We can't look up to heaven and say, God, now you owe me salvation, but they are conditions. God has said that we must meet things God has said we must obey. And friend, the conditional works is what we're talking about in James chapter 2. In the long ago, Martin Luther would refer to the epistle of James as a right strawy epistle, meaning that it wasn't good for anything because in his mind it contradicted Paul's teaching about faith in the book of Romans. Friend, there's no contradiction. If we understand, James is talking about conditional works. There are things we must do to be pleasing to God and right in His sight, and that's what James wants us to do in our life. And so as we think about James chapter 2, in verses 1 through 13, James is going to talk about the Christian and his view of prejudice, how he must not be prejudiced, how the true Christianity is not prejudicial. And then James 2 verses 14 through 26, he's going to discuss faith and works. And in both of these cases, he's going to give us some really vivid illustrations. Let's begin in James chapter 2 and notice the illustration of the man who comes into this assembly. Look in James chapter 2, and I want you to notice beginning in verse number 2. James says, for, don't, he says, don't hold the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ with partiality. And then he gives this illustration. For if there should come into your assembly a man with gold rings in fine apparel, and there should also come in a poor man in filthy clothes, and you pay attention to the one wearing the fine clothes and say to him, you sit here in a good place, and say to the poor man, you stand there or sit here at my footstool, have you not shown partiality among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts. You can imagine how this might be. The assembly opens up on Sunday morning, and two people walk in. One man is dressed to the hilt, head to toe. He's dressed as fine. He's got the nicest suit, the shiniest shoes. He's got beautiful rings on his finger. He just looks like he's got lots of money. How do we treat that man? Well, sir, won't you come in? We want you to sit right up here at the front. This is the best seat in the house. We've been saving it for you. Don't even know anything about the man, but just on appearance, that's what they say. And then right behind that man, a fella got off work at the coal mine. He didn't have time to go home and wash his clothes and really even get all the dirt off his hands and his face. But he got there. And they say to this man, oh, now come in here. You can come in, they say. But don't touch anybody. Don't get real close to this fellow for sure. You sit right here in the corner or you stand here at the footstool and just mind your own business and don't bother him. We don't care if you worship, but don't really stand out much. James says, wait a minute. Why are you treating these two people so differently? They're both made in the image of God. They both have a soul that has eternal importance. And James will say, it's not even logical. Who is it that is dragging you into courts and oppressing you? It isn't the poor fella. James says it's the rich who are doing that. The poor of this world, God's chosen to be heirs of the grace of life. And so they're showing partiality based on outward appearance only. And that is not the way God wants Christians to react. And so we need to realize, listen very carefully, rich or poor, black or white, no matter what our social status may or may not be, no matter who we think we are or who others think we are. Friend, let's realize this. All men stand on level ground at the foot of the cross. The rich man needs the gospel and the poor man needs the gospel. The white man needs the gospel and the black man needs the gospel. But the person who's got a lot of money and the person who don't have any money Everybody stands on level ground at the foot of the cross. There's no big me and little you. And as Christians, we've got to work extra hard to make sure we're not prejudiced. In a society that seems to be on edge about racism, on edge about prejudice, Christians want to go the extra mile to love everybody. We want to go the extra mile to speak the truth and love to everybody. We want to greet everybody the same. In fact, as we learn, God's chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom of God. 
people who haven't got all the fancy things of this world, sometimes they're even easier to reach because they know they need God. Think about the example of Luke chapter 12, verses 15 through 21. Here's a man that had been hard to reach. Luke 12, verses 15 through 21, there was a man who had a great crop year. And he began to say to his soul, he began to talk to himself and he said, so you've got many goods laid up for many years. In essence, take it easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. You know what happened next? God said, you fool. This night will your soul be required of you. Then whose things will those be whom you have acquired? And the lesson is, so is he who is rich, but not toward God. Riches won't matter anything on the day of judgment. We're all going to stand before God based on our obedience to the will of God and the will of Christ. And we need to make sure that we're not prejudiced with the faith. He said, James says, my brethren, do not hold the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with partiality. We don't get to pick and choose. God's already picked and he's already chosen. And he said, let whosoever will come freely. Go into all the world, not America only, not the neighborhood you like only. Go into all the world. Preach the gospel unto every creature. Paul would say, Him we preach, warning every man, teaching every man that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. And so we need to realize the same way that we judge people, we're also going to be judged. In fact, that's what James 2 will say. Look in your Bible in James chapter 2 and notice what the Bible says beginning in verse number 8. James says, If you really fulfill the royal law according to the Scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You do well. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressor. Friend, hear us well today. Prejudice and partiality with the gospel of Christ, the Bible doesn't beat around the bush, it says it's a sin. That's not right for a Christian to act that way. And we should never be prejudiced for one person and against another in our lives. That's not the way Christ was. And that's not the way we should be either. And on top of that, the way we judge is going to be reciprocated back to us. Look in James 2 verse 12. So speak. And so do as those who will be judged by the law of liberty. For judgment is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. How do I want God to deal with me? Well, friend, I've made mistakes. We've all done things that are not right. God, I hope and pray, and I know the Bible teaches, God will deal with me in His long-suffering with long-suffering and mercy. Friends, shouldn't we deal the same way with other people? If that's the way I hope and pray God deals with me, friend, I want to deal that way with other people as well. And so let's not get so caught up on the exterior. Let's not be prejudiced with the faith of the gospel. Let's share the good news with everyone. That's part of faith in action. Then James is going to teach in James chapter 2, that as we think about faith and action, we need to realize a Christian, a Christian has to have the right type of faith and action. We've got to put our, our works and our actions together to be pleasing with God. Look at the second illustration James uses, beginning in James chapter 2. Watch beginning in verse number 14. James says, What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does, does not have works? Can faith save him? And then he gives the illustration. If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, Depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but you do not give him the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? And here's the point. Thus also faith alone, by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Now friend, that's a, the illustration James uses is a very vivid illustration. Think about, again, you're at the congregation, and somebody comes up and they say, me and my family, you know, we're really hungry. We haven't eaten in a few days. And it's cold outside, and we don't have enough clothes. We don't have clothes to, 
to put on us and our children. We're hungry and we're cold and we're cold. And you say, man, we're so glad you came here. This is a group of Christians. We believe in God. God bless you and we hope you find what you need and you send them out the door packing. Well, friend, how would that look? You see, that's the person who in his mind is a faith-only Christian. You've got people who say, well, you can say you're a word Christian. We're a faith Christian. James says, wait a minute. There is no such thing as a faith Christian and a works Christian. How are you going to, you say to the person, be warm and filled. How much good is that going to do them? Friend, if James says, if you don't give them the things that are needed for the body, you haven't done them any good. What's the point? I want you to hear real well. Verse 17. Thus, faith by itself, faith alone, if it does not have works, is dead. Friend, there are a lot of people in our world who will teach that all you've got to do is believe in Jesus. Just believe in Jesus, say the Lord's Prayer, you'll be all right. Friend, the Bible teaches we've got to do more than just believe. Having faith in God means that we're willing to do what He says when He says it. What is faith, by the way? Faith is the evidence of things hoped for, the substance of things not yet seen. Faith is trust in God based on the evidence. And trust, my friend, is always combined with doing what God says. Did you know that in Romans chapter 1, verse 4, and Romans 16, verse 26, Paul defined faith in the book of Romans, and in both those verses, at the beginning and at the end of the book, he says it's the obedience of faith. That's the type of faith God's looking for. In fact, did you know Here's what a lot, of, a lot of people will say. You know, that's all good and well, but no, can't have any works. Anything you do is works. That's not right. Can't have works salvation. Friend, I understand if we're trying to earn our salvation, but we're talking here about conditional works. And did you know that belief is a work in the Bible? Let me show you from the Scripture. Would you open your Bible to John chapter 6? I want you to see that belief is also defined as a conditional work that we must meet. Look in John chapter 6, and notice what the Bible says in verse number 29. Jesus answered and said to them, to the Jews who said, what must we do to work the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, this is the work of God that you believe on Him whom He sent. Now what's that mean? Is it a work for God to do? No. This is the work of God for you. Belief is a conditional work that I must meet to be pleasing to God. And so to those who say no works, friend, you can't even believe in God and be keeping what the Scripture says. And so let's realize that James is talking about conditions a person must meet to be right in the sight of God. Now, there is the other type of faith, and that is a dead or a demonic faith. I want you to look again in James chapter 2 with me. And notice what James says in verses 18 and 19. James chapter 2 defines this demonic or dead faith. James says, but someone will say, he, he, he already hears the argument. Someone will say, you've got faith, I have works. James says, oh yeah? Show me your faith without your works, and I'll show you my faith by your works. Listen to this. You believe there's one God, you do well. Good for you. Even the demons believe and tremble. In James's mind, he hears some Christians who caught on somewhere to the idea that you can't have any works, which is contrary to teaching. James knows you've got to meet the conditions of God, and so he, he, he hears the argument. But someone says, well, you're a faith Christian. You've got faith. I'm a works Christian. I've got works. James says, well, well wait a minute now. To those of you who say, I'm a faith Christian, James says, prove it, show me, prove to me that you're a faith Christian. Well, how? How can you prove, show me your faith without your works? Prove that you're a child of God. How would I know that, James said. And of course, the answer is clear. You can't. The only way I can show my faith is by my actions. And James says, let me show you the type of faith 
that just says, I believe in God. What's that like? Friend, please hear me well today. A type of faith that says all you've got to do is believe and nothing else is just like every demon in the halls of hell has that type of faith. It's a demonic type of faith. James says, you believe there's one God, you do well. Good for you. Even the demons believe and tremble. A faith that just believes, that says all you've got to do is believe in Jesus. Friend, that's a demonic type of faith that the demons in the halls of hell have. That's not a saving type of faith. That's not going to help somebody to be right in God's sight, nor is it the type of faith that it promotes good Christianity, real, pure, undefiled religion. And so we're living in a world where, where people will say, all you've got to do to be right with God, all you've got to do to be saved is just say the Lord's Prayer and believe on Jesus. Friend number one, you can't find the sinner's prayer that people often say, Lord Jesus, I recognize you as Savior. I now ask you to come to my heart. You can't find that in the Bible. It's just not in there. And secondly, that type of faith won't save anybody. The halls of hell and all the demons therein have that type of faith. And my friend, they're surely not saved. Well, let's then turn our attention to the type of faith James wants us to think about. Look in your Bible in James chapter 2, and James is now going to show us the right type of faith. Look in verse 20. James gives two illustrations. He says, But do you want to know, O foolish man, that faith without works is dead? He says, Let me show you a good example. Was not Abraham our father? justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? Do you see that faith, here's the beautiful idea, faith was working together with his works. And by works, faith was made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled which says, Abraham believed God and it was accounted him for righteousness and he was called the friend of God. Think about this powerful example of Abraham. Abraham, God told Abraham, let's back up and catch the context, okay? God had made the promise to Abraham and Sarah, through you, through your seed, all nations of the earth are going to be blessed. Abraham and Sarah have a son. Finally, the son of promise is here, Isaac. They're too old to have any more children, it looks like. And so in their mind, Isaac is the son of promise. God says, Abraham, I want you to take Isaac, your only son. I want you to take him up to Mount Moriah and sacrifice him. Can you imagine how Abraham must have felt? But what did Abraham do? Abraham took his son. He loaded the donkey. They went up on that mountain. They, they found the wood. He tied him to it there. And he raised his hand up to sacrifice him. Of course, God stopped him, we know. But it wasn't the moment when Abraham believed God. The Bible says Abraham's works work together with his faith, and listen to this, by his works, his faith was made complete. You cannot have a complete biblical faith if you're not doing anything as a Christian. Are we earning our salvation? Friend, that is absolutely not what we're doing. But must I obey God to be right with him? Absolutely I must. Jesus is one day coming in flaming fire to take vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 2 Thessalonians 1, verses 7 through 10. Now, here's the pivotal verse, and I don't want you to miss this. Verse number 24, and you need to make a note of this in your Bible. This is the only time faith only occurs in the Bible, and God says the exact opposite of what millions are teaching. Millions are teaching, all you've got to do to be saved is have faith and faith only. The only time in your Bible and mine, faith only occurs. God says the exact opposite of that. Now let's read it in our Bible together. Look in James 2, verse 24. You see then that a man is justified by works, here it is, and not by Faith only. Friend, does the Bible teach faith only saved? It absolutely does not. It is the obedience of faith. Romans 1, 4, Romans 16, 26. It is faith working with works makes faith complete or perfect. James 1, verse 23 through 24. And friend, the Bible clearly says 
a man is not justified, just as if I'd never seen it, justified by faith only. Isn't that amazing? The only time in the Bible God says anything about faith only or faith alone, God says it won't say. Isn't it always good to listen to God and do what He says? Friend, we ask you today, are you sure you've obeyed the gospel of Christ? That you're a real Christian, a New Testament Christian? Do you believe Jesus is God's Son? John 8, verse 24. Remember, Jesus said in John 6, 29, belief in God is a work from God. It's a work that we've got to do, a, a work of obedience as well. Have you repented of sin? That's something Jesus said we have to do. Unless you repent, you'll all likewise perish. Peter preached in Acts 3, verse 19, Repent and turn, that your sins may be blotted out, that seasons of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Have we done like the Ethiopian eunuch in Acts chapter 8, verse number uh, 37 through 39, when, we say, when he said, I believe Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God? Have we made the good confession, Jesus is Lord and Savior? And have we been baptized in water? for the remission of our sins, to save us from eternal damnation. Listen to what Jesus said in Mark 16, 16. He that believes and is baptized will be saved. He that does not believe shall be condemned. I want you to think about another example with me. In Acts chapter 9, verse 6, the Lord told Saul of Tarsus, who he had just confronted with the gospel, just confronted that he's the Savior, he told Saul of Tarsus, go in the city, it'll be told you what you must do. Saul goes into the city. Ananias comes to him. In Acts twenty two sixteen. 16, Ananias says, Saul, Saul, why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized, and listen to this, and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Thus Peter would say, baptism does now also save us. We hope you'll join us next time as we're going to study more about this great book of James, Faith in Action. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, radio, and Internet. Our motto is to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wife. This is the Gospel of Christ. We encourage you to visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study material, as well as video and audio from our lessons. If you would like to have a copy of today's lesson, please visit our website and fill out a media request form. You can also reach us by emailing mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call us at 844-6-GOSPEL or write to us at the address on your screen. You can also get our Gospel of Christ app on your handheld devices for those on the go.